Hello everyone, I'd like to tell you something about Galicia and its language. Uh, many people don't even know there's bagpipes there and so I think we already gave you that presentation. Um, Galicia is actually a region in the northwest of Spain. Uh, just so you can have some comparison, some numbers, uh, Maricopa County is around uh, uh, 9,000 square miles, Galicia 11,000. Maricopa 4.5 million uh, inhabitants living here, population of Galicia 2.7 million. So you have a bit of a, of a reference. And what happens with Galicia is it's a, I'm obviously my family's from there, so I'm biased, but it's a beautiful, very green, lush uh, place, actually very different from southern Spain. And uh, it actually stands out by, by its uh, hilly green landscape and by its rough coastline. So it reminds you way more of uh, what you would uh, think about seeing in Ireland or Scotland than about southern Spain. Okay, and uh, I think that's uh, what it stands out for. And the similar thing applies actually to Asturias as well. And what happens is the Galician language itself is actually Roman's language. That's why sometimes it's not included strictly in the, within the Gaelic League of uh, our culture. So it's a Roman's language. It's very closely related to Portuguese. Actually, six, seven hundred years ago, it used to be all the same language. Uh, the only thing is that there's uh, uh, the number of loan words in Galician to this day is actually way higher than for any other language on the Iberian Peninsula. So there is th still that certain influx of Celtic tribes living in north northwestern uh, Spain. Um, the other thing that uh, is uh, uh, something that you cannot forget to mention about Galicia when you talk about it is the Camino de Santiago, the St. James Way. There we have the little uh, St. James Cross, which is uh, actually the symbol. Uh, St. James Way or Camino de Santiago is actually one of the most important pilgrimage routes. Uh, uh, and there's different routes all across Europe and they all lead to, uh, to Santiago de Compostela, to St. James. And actually this year and next year uh, are Año Jacobeos, which is so-called holy years and they only occur when uh, uh, July 25th, which is the patron day, falls on Sunday. And that's the case this year, for example. So it's a, it's a great occasion also to mention this. Um, what else about Galicia? What, what else can we say? Just an example about uh, the language. Uh, um, there's two words that are very kind of usually quoted when we talk about Celtic uh, influence. Leda, for example, is a, a field, a leveled uh, a plot or a leveled uh, a piece of land. And then Berthe is a cradle. And that has not definitely no Latin origins. And that's an example of, uh, of, of basically the, the Celtic influx in, in the language. Um, one more thing that we need to mention about Galicia when we talk about uh, that beautiful region is uh, uh, the so-called Morinha. Uh, Galicians feel, uh, have this deep feeling of uh, homesickness and it's very closely related to uh, what the Irish people feel or the, uh, um, uh, in, in Wales as well or uh, people in Scotland and that's the reason why there's also so many Celtic festivals all across the US because people like to keep the traditions alive. We have exactly the same feeling. In uh, our language it's called Morinha, that's the Galician word for homesickness. And you have to consider, out of two, there's 2.7 million, uh, million people living in Galicia, but there's another 500,000 living all across the world and millions of descendants of Gallegos that emigrated back at the end of the 19th century and also between the 1950s and 1970s especially. Those were the two main points of uh, emigration, of exodus, basically. Um, actually, a poem that summarizes very well this whole feeling of leaving your land, but still uh, having this longing feeling to return one day or to at least visit, it has been written or was written back in the day in the, at the end of the 19th century by Rosalia de Castro, for me the most uh, important poet of Galician literature. And we're going to share with you guys a poem. I'm going to read it in Galician, and my friend Jim here is going to read it in, in English. Adiós ríos, adiós fontes, adiós regatos pequenos, adiós vista dos meus hoyos, non sei cando nos veremos. Miña terra, miña terra, terra donde meu criei, hortiña que quero tanto, figueiriñas que plantei. Prados, ríos, arboredas, pinares que move o vento, pasariños piadores, casiña do meu contento. Muiños dos castañares, noites claras de luar, campaniñas trimbadoras da igresiña do lugar. Amoriñas das silveiras, que hoy daba o meu amor, camaininhos entre o meu millo, adiós, para sempre adiós. Adiós, gloria, adiós, contento. Deixo a casa onde nací, deixo a aldea que conozo por un mundo que non vin, deixo amigos por estraños, deixo a veiga polo mar, deixo, en fin, canto ben quero, quem pudera non deixar. In inglés, goodbye rivers. Goodbye fountains, goodbye little rills. Goodbye sight of my eyes, don't know when we'll see each other again. Sod of mine, sod of mine, sod where I was raised, small orchard I love so, dear fig trees that I planted.
meadows, streams, groves, stands of pines waved by the wind, little chirping birds, darling cottage of my joy, mill in the chestnut wood, clear nights of brilliant moonlight, cherished ringing bells of the tiny parish church, blackberries in the brambles that I used to give my love, narrow footprints through the cornfields, goodbye forever, goodbye, goodbye heaven, goodbye happiness, I leave the house of my birth, I leave the hamlet that I know, for a world I haven't seen. I leave friends for strangers, I leave the lowland for the sea, I leave, in short, what I, well, love. Would I didn't have to go. Thank you. Gracias a todos. Gracias a todos.